Um, so I'll be introducing Smith Waterman. It's an accurate DNA sequencing algorithm. Um, but before we get into it, I want to ask you a quick question. And that is, did you know that you share approximately 60% of your DNA with a banana? And it, it's, it's a quite common fact. I, I'm sure most of you have heard it before. Um, but have you ever ta taken the time to sit down and just think and ponder uh, about what this entails? Like, how do they know? How did some guy just sit down with a mirror and a banana and think to himself, wow, we kind of look the same? <laughs> it turns out he didn't. In fact, uh, according to science, this is a scientific fact. Um, so my goal for today is that you should have uh, a better idea of how people know that we are similar to bananas. And I also want you to leave here with a very good idea of how the Smith-Waterman algorithm works, uh, what it is, what it does. And uh, at the end, I want to try to broaden our horizons and find some different use cases for the algorithm uh, that are quite different from DNA sequencing. So to begin, let's look at what is even sequence alignment? Uh, if you don't have a background in uh, bioinformatics, you probably don't know. So let's start even further back and uh, take a look at what a sequence is. It's basically just a string of characters where each character represents something, and that something is usually like they, it could be nucleotide, nucleotide bases in DNA, like GTCNA, I think it is. Uh, and for our banana, that would be something like this string just with in the length of billions. Uh, so what does it mean to align two sequences to each other? Well, basically, we try to find the similarities between them. So it's a measure of similarity. So to illustrate what I mean by this, we uh, can take two uh, random sequences, like banana or human. And then we can see pretty quickly that the most common, the longest common subsequence here is AN, at least to my eyes. Uh, so in general, we have the concepts of global and local alignment. In global alignment, you try to find the similarity between the entirety of the strings, so basically comparing the entire banana genome to the entire human genome. When local alignment, we try to identify uh, local regions of similarity. So in this talk, we will focus on local alignment because that's what Smith-Waterman does. Uh, in general, the intuition here is that if a thing resembles another thing, then they probably share the same properties. So in other words, if it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, then it's probably a duck. So imagine you have a global pandemic. It's an unrealistic scenario, I know, but Bear with me. Uh, and you have a virus going around, and we all know it. We know its uh, composition and what it looks like. And then all of a sudden, you get a new variation, something that resembles it, but it's kind of different. And by aligning it to the well-known, we can identify this, these uh, new strains of virus. And we might call it something like Omicron or Delta. Uh, and if you have a patient, you can also diagnose their disease by taking a sample and aligning it to whatever you think the disease is. So let's get into the algorithm. As a sequence alignment algorithm, it compares sequences, and it does it locally. Uh, so it tries to find the most similar subsequence between the two, and it does so by <laughs> optimizing some similarity measure. And uh, imagine you have these two sequences of uh, DNA. And at the first glance, we can see that uh, ATAT, that's a good, uh, that's a good subsequence. But it's kind of annoying to see the T and T on the other side of the C and G. Uh, so what if we just remove those and say, we allow gaps? Then we can say that, oh, this is a much longer subsequence. But they still look kind of similar, even though they're not identical. And this similarity, even though you have some slight differences, that's called a motif. So let's go back to our algorithm and 
put it under the microscope and look a little bit more in detail. So the algorithm contains four major parts. You have a uh, substitution matrix and a gap penalty. And then you have a scoring matrix. Those are the two artifacts you work with. And then you just perform the scoring. And then you do a traceback at the end to figure out what the result was. So our substitution matrix, it can be complex. Uh, and it, it is used to give a score to matches and mismatches between characters. And uh, it can also be something really simple, uh, which we, we will be using in this talk. Uh, our gap penalty is, uh, there are various strategies for uh, developing a scheme. Um, they mostly revolve around the cost to open and extend uh, gaps. And it can be something like the length of the gap and the cost to open the gap in the first place. So here are some examples. Now, our scoring matrix is something you will be seeing quite a lot this talk. So taking our banana and our human, we can see that uh, we got to initialize this matrix with zeros. The reason we do this is to give the algorithm a natural stopping point, because whenever it encounters a zero, it knows to stop. Now, for our scoring, this is a little bit more complex. So let's zoom in on one cell uh, from the uh, table. And here you see the three neighbors that are adjacent to age ij uh, coordinates here. They are the key. They, you will see them again and again during the, ex the example afterwards. So we have three choices. We want to maximize our score. So we can either take the value in the diagonal and, uh, and add whatever the substitution matrix gives us. Or we can open gaps and uh, align with the other uh, squares. Uh, and the algorithm does not allow negative values. So if, you have any, if all the three cells are negative, then you insert a zero. So mathematically, this looks like uh, this piecewise function here. It's a mass fu max function, and the zero is very important. It is what differentiates the Smith-Waterman algorithm from the needleman wunsch algorithm, which works as a global alignment algorithm. If we allowed negative scores, the algorithm would, would never stop, and it would align the entire sequence. So for our, our example, we have this substitution matrix and gap penalty, and we will align the sequences TGTC and GTCA. It's very basic. And uh, here in our middle, we have the scoring matrix. And to our right, we have a cheat sheet, which will help us perform the scoring. So the first step is to initialize the matrix with zeros. And then we start in the first uh, open, uh, the first open uh, cell. And we look at the adjacent, or the, uh, the letters this one represents. So we have a G and a T. They are not similar. So moving from our diagonal, we'll give minus 1. We could open a gap, but that would be 0 minus 1, and it would be negative values. So here we use a 0. For our next one, we see we have a similarity, and we add 1 to the 0 up on the diagonal left uh, corner. Uh, and we continue like this. We see that. All possible choices lead to zero here too, and for the last one as well. So here we have another match. That's another one. And we just keep going like this. It's pretty simple. You always look at the three neighboring cells, and then you f figure out which one gives you the highest number uh, from the piecewise function. And then you keep going. Here we have another mismatch, and then we have another match. But here we have a one in the adjacent diagonal uh, square. So this one gets two. And this further propagates into this one, where it's much better to open a gap and get the value one. And so we continue on, get some zeros. Here we open a new gap. And here we have a final match in C, which gives us the value of three. And then we continue to fill out our matrix and get a final gap here. And now we have our entire scoring matrix filled out. So now it's time for the traceback. Uh, in our traceback, we try to identify, or we don't try, we actually do it. Uh, <laughs> we identify our highest number, which is three in this case. And then we just keep going and looking at the same three squares we've been working on, 
the entire time. So here's two and one, and then we hit the zero, so then we stop, and we get the alignment GTC. So let's pause for a moment. We got a lot of baggage in our minds now, a lot of information, but let's try to put on our thinking hats for a moment and uh, try to broaden our horizons, because what we have here is something that compares sequences, but it doesn't necessarily have to be DNA or bananas or humans. It could be network traffic, where you could interpret it as a sequence and use it to uh, discover unusual patterns, which could indicate that something needs attention. It could be a cyber attack or other problems. Or you could use it in uh, music analysis, for example, to do motif discovery or uh, compare different compositions. And that was a brief introduction to Smith Waterman. Thank you. My name is Adam. You can find me on LinkedIn here, or if you want to look at my employer, they have a QR code there. Thanks.